What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Guys, um I felt before I could do stop talking about the uh Tanzania series, Zambia, Tanzania or oh, Tunduma na Konde series. I felt this series will not be enough uh to finish it by talking about um what I discovered, I'm not saying the, the other one is better than the other or who is better than the other, but I just wanted to tell you that I was studying uh, the entrepreneurship or the business aspect of Zambians uh, versus Tanzanians. So in this video, I'll be talking about why Tanzanians are richer than Zambians. That's the video for today. So make sure if you are new on my channel, do subscribe, turn on bell notification and give this video a thumbs up my name is travel attainment all i do is bring you stories from zambia and everywhere i go so this time around uh i went to Dar es i went to nakonde tunduma border to go and pick up a car for a client that is also what i do as my side hustle so you guys if you are buying a car from japan you want to import a car to zambia please do contact me contact me uh, and then I'll be able to carry or pick up a car for you. Yes, so let's dive in right into the video. So here's the thing. Both Zambians, uh, you know, due to limited jobs everywhere we go, many people, particularly Tanzanians, they are into business. Zambians are into business as well. Uh, at a personal level, at a company level, uh, there is a lot of products. For example, we have products, drinks, soaps, trade kings on the Zambian side. We have got Azam on the other side, which is one of the big companies. So at individual levels as well, you see a lot of entrepreneurship. For example, there is the motorbike, the pikipiki or tuk-tuk. A lot of motorbikes. Every minute, if you are not careful, you can be bashed. Uh-huh. Either way, maybe you can even be bashed twice. They bash you here, another one bashes you. So you have to be careful when you are in that border town. So here is the thing. You find that uh, Zambians, on the other side, you may see people, women carrying stuff on their head, oranges. It could be potatoes. It could be anything or food stuffs. Some are hawking, there are some, they have stationed markets. If you go on the Zambian side, same thing. Tanzanian side, same thing. Sometimes you find Tanzanians are hawking on the Zambian side. Sometimes you find uh, Zambians on the Tanzanian side doing a similar thing. But it is more dominated by the, by the Tanzanians because Tanzanians are more, more... Uh, what makes them different to be maybe to make it in business? One of the things is see, Tanzania has got a bigger population, Zambia has got a smaller population. So, due to that, you find that it has taught people to be so aggressive. So, Tanzanians are more aggressive approach to business. And you know, in business, the more aggressive you have and not so relaxed, well, it is a new, another new day, things like that. Those who are aggressive will end up winning more. So that's what I noticed. You find that uh, mm, prices could be the same on both sides, but uh, sometimes when you go to the Tanzanian side, you may find that, for example, I'm not trying. To, uh, I love my country to death. I don't have a dream of living in any other country ever, but I have a dream of visiting every country. So Tanzania you happens to be a country I've visited more than any other country in the world. So Tanzanians, we find that they are more aggressive on business. Tanzanians go an extra mile to maybe add value to it. For example, if I give you an example of the one I told you, the hotel situation, when you go to the Zambia, I'm not saying Zambia, they are there. There are a lot of hotels as well, or lodges, or guest houses, but you discover that um, the standards, the Tanzanian who have better standard, well more advanced. I remember when you just dropped off from the bus, same amount of money or similar or slight difference. Uh, with my friend, we tried to go to the 
to the to the Zambian side, guys, I've got this because with the tra I had a terrible headache. I had the flu, I had the fever when I went. Even when I was driving, I just forced myself to do it. So that is the reaction I have. So I've got a so here and here. Yeah. So Tanzanian hotels were far better than Zambian hotels. You find that Zambian hotels sometimes you are tired, you need warm bath. No, no warm bath. But in Tanzania, you have warm bath. Let me tell you the conditions which we found. You find the hot bath. We would find they was providing free Wi-Fi. They were providing free breakfast. Yes, free breakfast. Who do not want uh, such a thing? And by the way, you are coming from Zambia. You reach there. You want to experience what is on the other side. Yeah, so that is the other thing. Free breakfast, Wi-Fi, free. Yeah, that is the, the other thing. And then the rooms, we find that they are cleaner. The hot water. In Zambia, we find that the hot water was being, there was one lodge where we went, the hot water was being prepared in a big drum, in a big container on fire or on charcoal. Who would want to go and carry water in a container like you are in the village, like the way we do in the village? No one wants to do that. Find that them, they do some extra touch. That is a fact. So Tanzanian are more aggressive. Tanzanian do value addition. The hotel, yes, yeah, some people were saying, so does that mean there's a hotel opportunity to invest in Nakonde? Yes, there is. So that you just add value, do something better, give them Wi-Fi, offer hot water, something which will be different. And in fact, Hotels are most of the time filled up, but I decided I'm not I'm not spending a night in Zambia. Crossed over to the other side. Yes. So the other thing you find that sometimes you have a situation where a car is coming from Dar es Salaam. Uh, Tanzanians are more aggressive, and this is where I can tell you now. Um, Tanzanian will get your car. Bring it to the border sometimes. This is what I would only this one I would discourage you. Uh, but if you want it is it is your car, do it. Uh the guys can fly. The guys who not care potholes, humps, they will just hit it. Now on that one I do not agree because you have to be gentle with somebody's car. They have just bought it. You need to bring it in a good condition. So, but anyway, that is also part of their business nature. Sometimes you run fast to the border, you go back, there's another car waiting for you to pick up. So, this is just another aspect which I wanted to, to compare. Otherwise, these are true Siamese twins of countries uh, who share similar culture, who share friendliness, which is so open, people are free I'm to move to and fro at the border. It doesn't so, matter. So you go there, the language they speak, they speak each other's languages. Even when you go to buy something on the Tanzanian side, you are talking to women, men who are cooking. They will be speaking some Bemba. You go to the Zambian side, you find that some Zambians are speaking Swahili. They are used. Some have even done intermarriages. That is how... They exist uh, at that particular place. And it happens, I so much love Tanzanians. And that is what makes them, uh, that's what makes it so unique. Well, thank God for Komesa. There is also another one. Uh, there is a market in Rusaka we call Komesa Market where you find a lot of foreigners from different countries in the Komesa uh, who are part of Komesa. But there are others who are not even part of Komesa. For example, they are so aggressive in what they are doing. Do you know that I've seen people who braid hair, the women who braid hair in Zambia? You find that somebody can be braiding hair in Zambia, they will take the whole day. Some will take even two days braiding your hair. A Swahili or a Swahili or a Tanzanian, a Maasai. There are Maasai guys who have come from there. They even sell Maasai slippers. Uh, they sell belts, leather, whatever. One thing, they are, there is a group of Maasai guys who braid women's hair. 
what Zambians will take the whole day. This is a fact. I know some people who feel like I'm hating on someone. Uh, Zambians, it may take them the whole day, even two days. A Maasai will do the smallest, most beautiful uh, hair extensions and it will take them three hours. They even use the fingers like this to say they will take three hours, your hair is done. That is how fast and aggressive they are. And I can tell you, a lot of these Maasai there in Zambia right now in Komesa moving around, most of them, they don't even have proper documentation, things like uh, passport, visa, whatever, who cares? I think at first it almost brought a threat, but uh, they have just let them go, continue their thing. Not all of them have got proper documentations, but who cares? That is why on a smaller scale, I was saying, I've made a number of shots you check out on my channel, where even me, I was able to cross to go in their country. Zambians, the people who live there, they cross into the, as long as you don't go far as far as verify, if you just go in the border town, you can stay there, eat, buy food, do shopping. You don't want to declare whatever you are carrying. You simply cross over to the Zambian side, buy potatoes, buy rice, buy clothes. Some of us went to the hotel, spent days that side but when it's during that time you come out come and do your business clear your vehicle which you are carrying and boom you are there thank you so much for watching guys if you are new on my channel do me a favor subscribe turn on the notification give this video a thumbs up uh, my name is travotainment i'll see you in my next video peace adios amigos bye